Welcome to our lecture online. If you were a student taking the JEE advanced test and you come up on this problem, you may say, wow, finally one I can do in less than three minutes, kind of making up for the ones you needed to take more than three minutes to do. Because remember, on average, you only get three minutes for each of these problems. So let's see why this might be a little bit quicker to solve. The figure below shows the variation of specific heat capacity, C, of a solid as a function of temperature, T. The temperature is increased continuously from 0 to 500 K at a constant rate, ignoring any volume change. The following statement or statements is or correct to a reasonable approximation. So they give us this graph and notice on the horizontal axis we have T and the ver vertical axis we have what we call the specific heat capacity, which essentially is the specific heat times the mass or the volume of the object which means that for that specific object, it's essentially the same as the specific heat. Now, if we write the equation, the QDT, the amount of heat put in or taken out of the system, is going to be equal to the mass times the specific heat times the delta T. And we know that the specific heat is going to be proportional for this object to the specific heat capacity. So let's read the four answers and see if any one of them could be correct or maybe all of them are correct. Let's find out. The rate, and remember it talks about the rate, so it's important, the rate at which heat is absorbed in the range of 0 to 100 K varies linearly with T. So is this a linear function for the first 100 K? And if I drop a line down here, you can see that at the very end, the, the slope begins to vary. This is a, essentially a straight line and then begins to curve. So, but it's a very, hmm, it's barely a curve. It's just almost imperceptible. So now, is the answer correct or is it not correct? So that's why they said to a reasonable approximation. And I think later on they figured out that the question was a little bit misleading because people didn't quite know how to interpret this. So they, they said that you can either Included as a correct answer if you assume this to be pretty well linear to a reasonable approximation, or if you didn't include the answer A, they would accept that as well because, after all, they did start curving a little bit. If it was completely straight, then obviously A would definitely be correct, but because of that, there's some ambiguity, and either answer, either including A or not including A, was acceptable in this particular problem. For B, for answer B, it says heat absorbed in increasing. In increasing the temperature from 0 to 100 K is less than the heat required for increasing the temperature from 400 to 500 K. So you can see that going from 100, 0 to 100 K, the average specific heat is about like this, or the specific heat capacity is about like this, but from 4 to 500 K, it's way up here. It's a much greater specific heat or specific heat capacity. And since delta Q delta T is linearly proportional, to the specific heat or the specific heat capacity. Definitely, if it's larger, that means you're going to have more heat absorbed during that period of time going from 400 to 500 than it is to go from a 0 to 100. So definitely B would be a correct answer. And if you assume that to be pretty well linear, then you say, well, A is a correct answer as well. For C, it says there is no change in the rate of heat absorbed. It's again, to talk about the rate, the dQdt, the rate of the heat absorbed, in the range from 400 to 500 K. So the question again is, is this a linear function or is this a nonlinear function? So let's go ahead and find out what these two points are. And again, you can notice that there's that slight, slight non-zero slope. But is it close enough to zero? Again, I think in the actual picture, it's very, very close to zero slope. If it's zero slope, that means there is no change in the rate of heat absorbed. And so that would be a correct answer. And finally, for D, the rate, again, it talks about the rate, the QDT of heat absorbed increases in the range from 200 to 300K. And notice, here we are at 200K, here we are at 300K. You can definitely see that the rate increases from here to here because the dq, uh, I'm sorry, the c increases from this point to this point. There's an increase. And so yes, the rate of heat absorption is increasing 
if you keep the change in the temperature constant, then the amount of heat required has to increase as C increases, and therefore you can say yes, answer D is correct as well. So it turns out that if you chose A, B, C, and D together, that was correct. If you chose B, C, and D together and you left off A, you assume that to be correct as well because of the ambiguity of that slope change at that very top portion of the 0 to 100K range. But that is how this problem is done. And was that less than three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of talking, but yes, I think you can kind of work through this problem and probably get it done in less than three minutes, giving you a few precious seconds more for the next problem.